So you got your brand new lithium batteries sitting there. And the question is, can you just hook those straight up to your inverter? Well, there's two cases, one where you can and one where you really shouldn't. And we'll get into both of those cases later in the video. All right, so what is the problem with doing that? Yeah, well, as we know, an inverter, it's a box of electronics. It's got circuit boards, switches, relays, and capacitors. Now the capacitors are the big problem. Capacitors play probably a few roles in the, the way an inverter works. But one thing they can do is they can give up their energy really quick. And on the other side of the coin, if they can give it up real fast, they can also receive the energy or the current flow coming out of the batteries really fast. Almost instantaneous is what it seems like. So if you go from empty to 100% full on a capacitor, you're probably gonna run the risk of damaging it. And that's where the problem lies with the inverter. Now let's look over the batteries. We have lithium iron phosphate batteries sitting here, but in the old days, lead acids were the industry standard for our off-grid systems and battery backups. And they didn't seem to be a big problem, but a few years ago, there was a big explosion of lithium iron phosphate batteries into the marketplace. And some problems started showing up <clears throat> with the inverters. Uh, what they do, lithium iron phosphate, can give their energy up a lot quicker than a lead acid battery. And it's so much quicker that problems started showing up with uh, people damaging in inverters. And the only way to do that is to slow the flow down. So what our goal is, is to slow the flow of the current from the battery to the inverter. It's kind of like, I don't know, if you gave me 10 pieces of bacon in my hand, I'd probably eat it in one second. I would never do that, I would just eat it myself. Well, <laughs> well, I would hope you would give me one piece at a time, like give me one piece every second, and I'm gonna eat it in 10, you know, 10 pieces in 10 seconds. And that's kind of the concept. That would be a lot better on me, and you, you know, probably better to eat it slower. I'll share my bacon with you, don't worry. Thank you. All right. but, and we could probably use it to hook these up too, but we're not gonna hey, sacrifice a piece that, of yeah. bacon like that. It's true. <laughs> we might fry it, but we might burn it too. So all we're gonna do is the same concept. We wanna slow the flow of the current from the battery to the inverter so the capacitors fill up slow. And when I say slow, only like five, 10, 15, 20 seconds, it's not that long. Yep. But when it happens, it keeps the capacitors from blowing up. Plus you can also, you know, the surge out of a battery, lithium iron phosphate can be, I don't know, thousand amps, it can be like a really big surge, which is, you know, lead acids can do the same thing, just not to the degree that lithium iron phosphates do, but you can burn your BMS up because they're only designed to handle one, two, 300 amps. You can burn your BMS up, a fuse, uh, your cable's probably gonna be okay, but any circuitry that that current has to flow through just to get to these capacitors is where the damage is gonna occur because the capacitors want to be filled up like from zero to, I mean, they will fill up so fast and the battery's happy to supply that current. Yeah, so there's a few different ways to do it. Is that? Yeah, there's, uh, some ways to slow this flow, and yeah. you're gonna show us how to do that. All right, some of the more common methods. First is a pencil. This is just a regular pencil, which I wouldn't recommend because then you have to cut off the eraser and we don't wanna be wasteful. So carpenter's pencil would be best because then you can just sharpen both ends and you can expose the graphite on there. And then you would just, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your, your positive cables are gonna be connected up from the battery to the inverter and then your negative on the battery. And then you're gonna take you're basically gonna bridge the end of your negative cable to the negative terminal on the inverter. So you're just touching the two and that's gonna how you pre-charge. So pencil is one, another is a resistor and this is a wire wound yeah. resistor. You can also use a ceramic resistor, but the preferred method that we like is a light bulb. And this is a 48 volt light bulb. And this actually would, would work too, I guess on a, 12 or 24 volt, so it should, I guess. Wouldn't we haven't tested, it. yeah. <clears throat> but anyways, same concept. You're going to connect your negative. Oh wait, first, hold on. You gotta put the old safety glasses on here. All right. So you're gonna take your negative cable on your battery, and then you're going to Take your light bulb, touch the bare wire there, and then take, touch the negative. Cool, oh, nice. Right there, the other end to the negative of the inverter. And then the light goes out. Did you see how that worked? Now, if I touch it again, 
nothing happens because it's already pre-charged. If you're finding the video helpful so far, give us a like and also subscribe to the channel. It would really help us out. Also, if you want to support our work, you can join our Patreon, subscribe star, and buy me a coffee. Yeah, and our verted display's lit up. It's hard to click inside. It's ready to go. And the reason that we like the light bulb is that the light goes out when the capacitors are full. So you get a visual indicator that they are pre-charged. Whereas with the pencil or the resistor, you don't get that visual indicator. Of course, we're kind of wondering though if, okay, well, let me back up. The reason that you care about this is if there were to be something wired wrong, then the current is gonna keep flowing. So with a resistor, it's gonna get really hot. It's gonna keep, it's just gonna keep going. Light bulb would keep lit. It would stay lit the whole time. It would not go out. So pencil, I don't know. I guess you could get a visual indicator there because it could catch on fire. We're not sure. We don't really want to. Well, we, 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 do wanna, we do wanna find out. We're gonna find out, but- We're not, gonna test it. Not in this video. Yep. So light bulb is very safe very easy. The pencil could be a good one though, and the resistor, good, good to have on hand though, as backups. Yeah. There's one case where you don't have to do this, and that comes with your BMS, because all this is, is determined by the BMS. If you do like what we had to do, you're doing it because you have a BMS that does not have a pre-charge resisting circuitry in it. And the ones that we use are the JBDs. They're very durable, very good BMSs, but they don't have it built into them. The other batteries that are like the ones that are already factory builds, like what we have with Orient Power and all that, those, your SOKs and um, EG4s and all those, they're gonna have your common factory built type batteries are gonna have something called a pre-charge resistor circuit in there. And it's kind of cool, what it does is you can make this connection and you can turn the breaker on the battery. And what it does, I guess, is it senses that there's nothing on this side. It's like, a, it feels like a short over here. So it's gonna like put some current out uh, there's probably two or three ways that this thing works. I don't really know. I've never looked into them, but they will actually put a small amount of current out to charge the inverter capacitors up. Once it reaches a certain state of charge that the BMS is determined is okay, I don't know if it's voltage or current, then it just opens the floodgates and lets everything go normal. And we've done that with the Orient Powers that we've tested. Because I remember that first time you know, we turn that on and, you know, you can hear stuff happening inside something in the battery, there's a click or something, and mm -hmm. then it just powers up. You know, you hear everything come on and start working right. So that's the pre-charged circuit. The JBDs that we're using don't have it. And you know why I know that it's a bad thing to do a direct connection? Because you remember the first time <laughs> we hooked one up, I went, okay, we're hooking it. Now we're hooking it to an Outback. So and I'm thinking Outback, pretty durable. Plus it had a big circuit breaker, which was an Outback brand, which they're probably the best you can get your hand, Midnight Solar now. But I thought, well, I can hook it up because we go through a bus bar. We go from the battery to a bus bar and fuses and then to the circuit breaker and then to the inverter. Then I thought, well, I can close my eyes and flip the breaker on and it'll all be good knowing there's gonna be a big arc inside that breaker and it's probably not good for it. So I did it and the inverter bumped a couple of times and I thought, even the power guys cannot escape reality. So we even make mistakes. Yeah, so we went back immediately and just <laughs> used the you know resistor and it worked fine. But the, that's where the cases are. If you have a if you have a factory built a pre built type of a battery, then just check with your manufacturer, check and make sure it's got a pre charged circuit. Even these new DIY boxes, you know those funny ones where they look like a, you know the they look like your Jack of Pears and EG fours and all that. They're kind of the box like a server rack and they supply you with everything but the cells and you buy the cells and then you put them in and hook everything up and you go, I'm a DIYer. <laughs> hey, those probably have the pre-charge circuit built into them too because of the way they look. But I don't know, we've never had our hands on one of those yet. So maybe we'll try that someday. And there is one other thing we tried. We tried a smaller inverter. This is a, what is this? A 4,800 or 40, it's uh, a 40 volt. Um, 24, 24 volt, 4,000. 4,000 watt inverter. We tried on a Magnum, which is a 1200 watt. It's a, this one is, is a is? 12 volt, 1000 watt. 1000 watt. We could not get that one to pre-charge correctly. We tried the light, we tried the resistor. So basically what happened with the light is it was just flickering, just blinking on and off. And as soon as we take it off, the voltage drops. The capacitors were not staying charged. Apparently that's a problem with small inverters. That's a common thing. 
Mm -hmm. So we thought it was us or the inverter or something, but that's common. So I guess that's one case where you don't necessarily have to pre-charge. You can try it, but if it's not working, then maybe you don't, you know, maybe you don't have to, because it didn't work with a Magnum. Yeah. At all. And we've heard that, that it's more for the higher power type of inverters. All right, guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoy the content, like, subscribe, share with a friend, ring the bell, you know, do all that stuff. And be sure to join our Patreon, subscribe star, and buy me a coffee, because I need a pair of clear safety glasses. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.